All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Assemble. My name is Hyrule, and today I'm reviewing War for Wakanda. So with that being said, here is everything that I think about the expansion, the good, and the bad. War for Wakanda is the game's biggest update to date. Coming with an all-new biome, two new villains, and Black Panther himself, War for Wakanda looks to expand the story, the world, and everything to do with Marvel's Avengers. Wakanda doesn't fail here. The beauty of the landscape all the way from the jungles to the temples to the golden city itself. The time Crystal Dynamics has spent sculpting these environments really pays off here after a year of running in biomes that may not inspire that marble feeling to them. The love and care is shown here and they've gone to great lengths to showcase their desire to make this as unique as possible. New health containers, new chests, it's the little things here that Crystal Dynamics have done that makes this such a step up and really provides what I think is a jarring experience pre-Wakanda and post-Wakanda. I think the biomes they've made need to be utilized moving forward, whether that's in the form of smaller content drops a la Beating the Odds, or in their endgame content to really utilize the environments that they've made. Wakanda showcases their ability to really put out a product that can still wow people who've even played this game for almost a year to this point. The story of War for Wakanda was the most enjoyable story that they've given us thus far. As someone who enjoyed Reassemble but didn't necessarily care for taking aim at Future Imperfect, I found myself caring for every little word said and what those ripple impacts could be across the future of the game, especially as we now see that infamous scene of Monica and Claw talking. A scene like that inspires the question of what's this and how does this work? And while they don't tell you what happens, you're left wondering through dialogue and your own wonder if there are any clones of Monica running around in control of aim. Where the story really shines though is through Claw. I think Steve Blum absolutely nails the delivery of Claw at every turn and he really sucks you into the world while building the stakes every time you see him show up on the scene. The delivery and the emotion and the way he's conveyed really makes you believe that this is a villain that is not just a threat to the Wakanda but a threat to the entire world. The writers were saying before the expansion launch that this just wasn't an Avengers expansion but a Wakanda story that took place in the Avengers game and to me it delivered on that. While the story itself is short, clocking in at around 4 hours, I found myself wanting more from these characters and not being bored of them at all. I think there's always a sweet spot between too long and too short, and while this edge closer to too short for me, I hope that we get a continuation of Wakanda down the line with these characters in the future. Kudos to each member of the cast, from Christopher Judge as T'Challa, Erica Luttrell as Shuri, Deborah Wilson as Koye, Dave Fenoy as Zawavari, and once again, Steve Blum as Claw. Each and every single one of them brought their best work to this game, and because of that, it really helps you get lost and sucked into the world that Crystal Dynamics is trying to build with this expansion. They nailed every line. Every single sense of emotion that they were trying to convey comes across genuinely as possible. They did everything they could to really make you feel that these are the characters you know and love from every iteration. From the movies, from comic books, from animation, from other games showing up there. This, I believe, is the greatest strength that Avengers has. The voice cast that Avengers has, has time and time again carried this game to new heights that maybe otherwise it wouldn't with a lesser cast these five new individuals to this voice cast really shine alongside the existing cast special shout out to jeff shine who plays captain america who really was able to convey the emotion and the humbleness that steve has for t'challa and being in wakanda as well as nolan north if you guys haven't listened to nolan north's iron man tony stark in the codex you should go and listen to that and the emotion that Nolan is able to convey when he's mad at T'Challa after A-Day. It's very different from what you may know of Nolan North's Iron Man when he screams, this is from the heart. This voice cast has done so much for this game and I hope we get more out of each and every single one of them moving forward. Now with an ever-growing voice cast, an ever-growing character list, it may become hard to give every single character their own moment in each and every expansion. Which is a shame because every time I see these characters and hear these characters, I want to know more from them. I want to hear them more. So I hope that, you know, even though we may not get the most lines out of a Kate, for example, or maybe a Black Widow, for example, or even to some degree a Hulk, for example, as people know from Future Imperfect, I hope those opportunities moving forward to showcase the voice talents that this game has and really provide more meaning and more lines to the characters that we all know and love. Moving on to the boss fights, the boss fights in the campaign were some of the most enjoyable to me outside of the Monica boss fight. The first fight with Crossbones really throws a different type of wrench in the whole scheme with you having to fight him and then having a set amount of time to take down the two points of interest on the cannon 
when crossbows goes down. Really fun having to do this, while not the, being the most intricate boss fight ever made. It definitely is a step up from some of the more attack, attack, attack fights we've had in the game this far. The second fight at the end of the campaign where you're fighting Claw and Crossbones together was the best boss fight we had in the game. Even better than MODOK, which some will say is the gold standard. From juggling two villains to the one-on-one -on -one with Claw and having to destroy the Aiden robots hovering around the platform, it all works together seamlessly to really provide a great boss fight, a great narrative end to War for Wakanda, and really sell the stakes of what they're trying to convey with this boss fight. This is probably their best work done with a boss fight in the game, and I would say this is the new gold standard where Monica used to be. Now let's talk about Black Panther himself. Black Panther feels amazing. Without breaking down a lot of his kit, the character is very fluid to play. His melee attacks are meaty, and there's a level of oomph behind them that you feel on every impact. His ranged daggers have an awesome sound effect that you love to hear every time you throw them, and we cannot forget the pounce attack because it's such a sweet mechanic that deserves his own mention. Over the next few weeks, you'll see a lot of Black Panther builds come out, and my advice for any of you is to at least try them out yourself and give them a spin. He's an amazing character, and the combat team once again has designed, nailed, and absolutely blown expectations out of the water with him. If there's ever anything Avengers doesn't do wrong, it's the character designs, their motions, their attacks. Every character feels so unique and so different that every time you pick it up, there is something to do with these characters that will provide a new interesting experience. Now for the next part, I'm going to break it down into two pieces, endgame and quality of life features. So for the endgame with the expansion, there's just nothing there. No Wakanda OLT and no Colony Labs. This could have been a perfect opportunity to sneak Colony Labs into the game without having to focus in on it itself. As we come up to the anniversary and there's still no sign of Colony Labs, the question remains what's holding it back. Now that we have our first piece of OLT content, I would have thought the time between that and Colony Labs would have been very short. To me, once again, this would have been the best opportunity to drop it in if the Wakanda one isn't ready because then players would have at least had something that really changes up the treadmill at the end of the expansion. Speaking on the Horde mode quickly, I really wish it would drop gear that mattered to any game players. The problem with that is that it just doesn't drop any gear that's interesting and it rotates out of the war table periodically. The horde mode could have presented a unique opportunity to do something different with the game. Take a unique mission, give it gear that would matter to end game players and put it on the three weekly rotations alongside the OLT and the Mega Hive. This is something that I think they should do because it just presents a unique gameplay opportunity here that the rest of the game just doesn't provide. Instead of having hives and you're going through your hives, why not do a horde mode? Why not do something different like that? You now have the bases and the foundation there and without having to do anything too crazy with it, just give it better gear, put it on a weekly rotation, buff the enemies. But with that being said, the fundamental lack of adding anything onto the end is the biggest failure of the expansion itself. They'll be talking over the next few days and weeks about post Wakanda and here in my opinion they failed in two regards. Before the expansion launched they didn't want to talk about anything but Wakanda. The problem with that now that we know is that the expansion only is going to last most players maybe one or two days and leveling Black Panther is only going to take for most players maybe three or four. Not having anything after the expansion is going to leave a lot of players wondering where things are going with this game. This is where they should be focused on putting out the fires as quickly as possible. Players will take their new Black Panthers through the end game they've done many times before, but there's only so many times you can take a new toy through the same adventures you've already gone on. The second point I'll make are about the quality of life features. When you think quality of life features, you think of two things primarily in the Avengers community. That is gear re-rolling and cosmetic rework. Expansion should not just be about expanding the narrative and the world that the game takes place in, but also expanding the features that the game provides. And while the game does do that with the new UI, there's a distinct lack of stuff that players have actually asked for time and time again. This is stuff I hope to see talked about in some sort of official way soon, and I know Brian has tweeted that he's working on the cosmetic rework, which is the most we've actually had communication on it. But at this point, what kind of progress is being made? What can we expect out of the cosmetic rework? What can we expect out of any of these things? It's been too long, and at this point, players are pretty fed up with not having a lot of these reworks come to the game. Expansions are a perfect opportunity to drop new features into the game that maybe you've been working on for a while. Or at the very least, if you can't do that, at least communicate when we should be expecting these features. Because historically, in many games before, expansions have been that perfect opportunity to say, this is our new content, this is our new endgame, and these are the features you've been asking for. You deliver it all in one big package and it makes the whole thing worth it. Avengers, for what it does well, it does some things not well. You get a great campaign, you get a great cast, you get a great visual feeling of Wakanda. You get a great character who's going to be very fun to play moving forward in the game's lifespan. 
But outside of that, you don't get an end game addition. You don't get the quality of life features that you've been asking for. And in some ways, you go a reverse on the quality of life features you've been asking for. For the past few months, players have been asking for a HUD removal ability to remove the visual clutter that we've been experiencing, whether it's Jarvis Barrier, HUD elements, all the visual flourish that these skills can provide. And instead of giving that, they've cluttered our screen with the sonic disruption. And obviously I know why they went with the sonic disruption because it's supposed to be a visual representation of the ability being done to you, of the debuff being done to you. But the problem with that is that it goes against what players have been asking for, less visual clutter, less visual flourish. And instead you amped it up to 10, even to some an 11. And because of that, a lot of the time you're going to start seeing conversations being like, why is this in the game? Why is this happening? And it's conversations that could be avoided. In all honesty, when I look at the Wakanda expansion, I see a great time here. I see a great story that is definitely catered to returning and new players. Give them a great character that they can run around with. Give them a great story that they can immerse themselves with. Give them a great biome that is Marvel to the core. But then I look at the end game, the lack of updates to it, the lack of anything meaningful being talked about with regards to it. And I look at the lack of quality of life features that are needed in this game that could have been added to the expansion. I look at a lot of this stuff and I wonder if this wasn't just a case of trying to rein in as many new players as possible and hopefully string along some of the old players until the roadmap update, which I hope is at the anniversary. Now, this isn't to be negative or to be overly critical of Crystal Dynamics because I did enjoy my time with Wakanda. But as a player who is very much so entrenched in the end game, I got to wonder where is this going for players like myself? I love doing the OLT. I run in the Super Adaptoid, but I need more of that. The updates are great. The characters are great. Just give me more hard content that is multiplayer focused in mind so I can come on day in and day out and have my fun. And unfortunately, Wakanda just wasn't that for me. But with that being said, guys, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you guys next time here. Enjoy the rest of your day. Care of yourselves. And I'll see you guys next time. Later.